government following Sunday's general election. Official results aren't due till mid-August, but the ruling Cambodian People's Party has already claimed a landslide victory. CPP says it's won all 125 parliamentary seats. But critics have called the polls a sham, with allegations of government interference and intimidation. Now for more on this, we're joined by Dr. Sopal Ia. He's an associate professor at Occidental College in the U.S. state of Virginia. Thanks so much for joining us uh, this evening. Uh, firstly, official results are due in mid-August, but the ruling CPP has already claimed a landslide a win. How do they uh, come to make such a claim? Well, I think they've just uh, done their preliminary counts and decided that based on the percentage won in the popular vote across different provinces, using the formula that uh, is applied for allocation of seats, that this has resulted in all 125 National Assembly seats going to them. So, Dr. Ia, why have the polls then been dogged by controversy? You know, after all, there were, as we see, a number of opposition parties in the race. And, you know, in fact, voter turnout was um, very good. It was uh, at 82%. Well, there was not the main opposition party. Uh, it was dissolved last year in uh, November 2017 by order of the Supreme Court, but really through action of the um, prime minister and his ruling party. And that party, uh, the Cambodian National Rescue Party, had won nearly half the vote in 2013 and in commune elections of 2017, again, uh, did almost as well. And so it, it's really... Uh, strange that uh, in a competition, the uh, main contender would be put out of commission. Well, it's not just the opposition that has, has sort of raised criticism. Several countries and rice groups have also questioned the legitimacy of the polls. Do you think it'll be a cause for concern for Prime Minister Hun Sen and his party? Well, uh, I think that uh, he's, got, he's pretty much set on having Chinese support for everything he does. But once sanctions uh, begin to take effect, uh, this might cause some second guessing about whether it was all worth it, frankly, um, with this uh, outrageous outcome for many Cambodians, literally no representation from any other party in the National Assembly. This will surely uh, cause even more countries to come to Cambodia's uh, aid in terms of uh, rescuing or resuscitating its democracy, which is essentially dead at this point. Okay, well, speaking of Hun Sen, you know, he's already ruled Cambodia for 33 years. He's now poised to extend that. How has the country performed, you know, uh, with him at the helm? And, you know, what will it be like or what will, it, what will more years under him, you know, mean for Cambodia? Economically speaking, the numbers uh, look very good in terms of uh, GDP growth. Um, of late, in the last decade, seven 8% on average per year. Of course, if one only looks at GDP growth, that's, that's essentially an average figure, and it isn't really uh, telling you whether uh, the poorest are, are doing better. It's just a, an overall economic figure for the entire economy per capita GDP has improved. But again, that's, that's an average figure. Um, in terms of corruption, Cambodia is a world champion. It has managed to uh, be the most corrupt in Southeast Asia. Uh, year after year. And so I would say there's lots of room for improvement. If one is looking at reform, for example, making the economy more efficient, removing some of the barriers to entrepreneurship, and uh, frankly, not using the tax department to uh, attack your opponents, which uh, has unfortunately been the case for, uh, for the current administration. Um, but, uh, but economically, I think it's, it's, it's done well. Um, if one looks only at performance legitimacy in that sense. How do you think other Asian countries view this election in which the result has been, you know, uh, just almost guaranteed? Well, I'm three, right? So for a lot of Asian le uh, leaders out there who are looking or aspiring to increase the level of authoritarianism uh, in their country, uh, Cambodia is a, uh, is a test case for how to do it in a way that seems not to get the attention of, of uh, a lot of Western countries, at least in the process of doing it. Now that it's been done, maybe it'll draw the ire of the international community because so much was invested for a quarter of a century in Cambodia's democracy, and now you've come to essentially a, a, a single-party state without any uh, competition in the National Assembly. So other countries may look at this with inspiration to, uh, to further their strongman, 
uh, down the road. Uh, but uh, I hope that it doesn't present that, frankly, because people need representation for all voices in their country. Dr. Yeah, there's another thing you mentioned earlier, you know, Hun Sen looking for China support. So the question is, how much does um, China figure in Cambodia politics then? Well, uh, on the, in the outer level, it doesn't look like they are actually engaged in literally manipulating things from the standpoint of who gets what and so on. But from a financial perspective, the level of uh, assistance from China has been so massive, it's outpaced every other country by far. I, my calculations are that at, uh, an estimated $4.3 billion in uh, debt to China, uh, this represents uh, more than half of uh, Cambodia's uh, total debt levels. And therefore, um, and, and at that is, is already about 20 percent of Cambodia's GDP. So it means that you owe one country a lot. And if you put all your eggs in one basket, you're going to be very dependent on that basket not falling, as well as making sure that you don't lose uh, China as a partner, uh, following perhaps uh, the Chinese model of governance in terms of uh, surveillance, in terms of single party rule, in terms of not allowing essentially other voices. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us and sharing your insights and your time. And Dr. Sopal Yeh from Occidental College weighing in on Cambodia's general election. Thank you. A rescue operation is underway to reach more than 600 hikers and their guides. They became stranded on Indonesia's Mount Rinjani following a 6.5.